What up, dudes? All right. We covered binomials and multiplying uh, a times a plus b squared. Now you really need to hit foiling. You need to be able to do this. This entire final exam that I'm going to be giving you is all about polynomials. All right. Well, I'll be honest with you. Okay, it's a, it's all about polynomials, and I threw in maybe about ten questions. 10 to 15 questions that are on the SAT traps and tricks and all of that kind of stuff that I didn't remember showing you. I would focus on on chapter 13 and 15 of the SAT prep things that I did. All right? Now, foiling, um, or actually, I, I shouldn't say foiling. I'm going to be doing anti-foiling, which is called factoring. And that's a pretty simple, straightforward game that you guys played in Algebra 1. And if not, then you definitely should have played it in Algebra 2. So let's make up a problem. x squared plus 3x minus 18. you got to be careful with, with, with making up problems because, I mean, sometimes they might not come out nicely. But, you know, there's techniques to know how to do when it doesn't come out nicely. Anyway, um, here's how you do it. You pull something like this. You put a parentheses and a parentheses. Okay? This is trick number one. Um, you ask yourself, what times what will give me x squared? Okay, well that's pretty straightforward, x times x. You know, technically I could put an x squared and a 1 here, but that always never works out. So, instead, put an x and an x. You'll be happy. Are we cool? Alright. Um, your password for this? Do you have it password protected? Uh, here, password. I'll, I'll put it in. I think we should know that, though. Yeah. Nice you're have it Actually, you know what? Uh, this is, I just created an account, so maybe we'll just create our own accounts on this thing. Give me a second. I just need to access this one. I know, my computer fries because it's hot because the AC doesn't Pull down for me. I know, isn't it? Maybe if you pull a tile out or something. I did. Be I did. It doesn't really work. Anyway, here. You're in. Uh, thank you. Sorry about that. Just had to fix that thing. All right, so check this out. Um, let me think. Let me think. Okay. We need to figure out. Oh, I'm sorry, Kaylin. I was concentrating so much on this, you told me the answer. I'm sorry. Yeah, all right. You're right. Um, 5 and negative 2. Will that work? No. No, it won't work. It won't work because, well, I guess that's why you said no, never mind. Because 5 and negative 2 doesn't multiply out to 18. Yes, it adds up to positive 3, but it doesn't multiply out to 18. We can only use numbers that multiply out to be negative 18. So I'm going with 3 and 6, maybe? 3 times 6 is 18, right? Yeah, yeah, we're good. All right, so three times six is eighteen. So I would say I need to make one of them positive and one of them negative. I'm gonna go with the negative on the three and the positive on the six. Does that make sense to you? Do you understand why I went with the positive on the six and the negative on the three? Do you understand why I had to have one positive and negative in the first place? All right, let me explain it to you. The reason why I had to have one positive and one negative is because I need to multiply out to be negative 18. The only way I can make a negative 18 is if I have a positive number times a negative number. That will give me negative 18. If this were a positive 18, then I would know that I have two options. I can make them both positive or both negative. Because a positive times a positive is obviously a positive, but a negative times a negative is also a positive. In this case, it's a negative over here, which tells me that these sim signs right here have to be opposite of each other. The reason why I went with a positive on the 6 as opposed to the 3 is because I know that when I add these together up, they need to equal this number in the middle, which is the positive 3. Positive 6 times, or positive 6 plus negative 3 is positive 3. If I put the negative on the other one, where it's negative 6, then I would have negative 6 plus positive 3, and that would give me negative 3, which is not the sign of that answer. So this is how I factored it. 
you guys know how to factor this. So right? this is this is old school stuff. We did this back when we were in kindergarten, right? This is what I taught my kindergartner last week. All right, you guys still alive back there? You guys, you guys hear me? I'm, I'm making sense. All right, cool. All right. Um, factory. That's a really good technique to be able to do. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the same exact problem the hard way. Okay. I'm going to apply this thing that we call the quadratic equation. It goes like this. AX squared plus BX plus C. You compare what numbers are in front over here. Is there an A, there B, and a C over there? And then you ask yourself, um, well, what are those numbers? If A is equal to 1, B is equal to 3, and C is equal to negative 18. I need your calculator help, so make sure you guys have your calculators ready. Um, the quadratic equation says negative b squared plus or minus the square root of, oh, I'm sorry. It's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Sorry, I, I, I messed that up there a little bit. But that's it right there, negative b. There's this negative boy who was unsure about going to a radical party. He was kind of a square missed out and talking to four awesome chicks, and the party was over at 2 a.m. You guys remember that story that I told you? I don't know if I told that one to you, but I think it's funny. Anyway, you plug this into here, and so I have negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 4 times 1 times 18, all divided by 2. Okay? So that says uh, negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus, or actually, sorry, sorry, I messed something up. That's not 18, that's negative 18. Okay, you see that? So that would be plus, because negative 4 times negative 18 is a positive number. What's 4 times 18? Is that 72? No, it's not 72. What is 4 times 18? Sorry. Don't make me think this morning. This early in the morning. I think it is 72. Yeah, it's 72. Yeah, alright, yeah, that's what I thought. Over 2. Okay. So, this would be negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 81 over 2. Awesome. This would be negative 3 plus or minus 9 over 2. So let's consider the plus version. The plus version says negative 3 plus 9 over 2. The minus version says negative 3 minus 9 over 2. I just took this and I broke it down into its two parts. All right, negative 3 plus 9, that's uh, 6 divided by 2, that's 3. Negative 3 minus 9, that's negative 12, divided by 2, that's 6. Wait a second, wait a second, that's negative 6. Got it? This answer's right here. is telling me the exact information as what we got earlier, which is x plus 6, x minus 3. If I set this equal to zero, by the way. Because that's what you need for the quadratic equation. You need the quadratic equation to have something equal to zero. I forgot to do that, I'm sorry. What this is saying up here is saying x plus 6 is equal to zero or x minus 3 is equal to zero. That tells me that x is equal to negative 6 or x is equal to positive 3. Look, the quadratic equation gave me the same answer. Now, here's my question. Which would you rather use? Quadratic equation or factoring? Would you rather do it the first way or using this quadratic equation? Factoring.
Come on, I need other people to answer. I mean, seriously, only Elisha would rather do factoring? All right, factoring. I'm getting the overwhelming, well, maybe not overwhelming, but I'm getting the feeling that you guys like the factoring method, not really the quadratic equation method. That's fine. In this particular case, I actually would you go with factoring. But what's the advantage then? Why the heck did we teach you this crazy formula if factoring is just so much easier? Well, what if I change this to a 19? What if I changed the original problem? Instead of a minus 18, I had a 19. Then you would not be able to factor it. Factoring would not work on that problem, on this problem right here, where it's not an 18, it's a 19. Factoring would fall apart. The only, the only way you could solve this was would be to use the quadratic equation. You would not be able to use, you would, you would not be able to apply factoring to this, you would only be able to solve it using quadratic equation. Sure, your answer will be uglier, but the quadratic equation will work. So here's what I'm saying. When you have a quadratic, sometimes factoring will work. All the time, quadratic equation will work. However, what's up, dude? <laughs> you can get in. All right, your password. Sorry. Good. Yeah. Or you can tell us what the password is. No, I can't. Uh, but I will kill my profile off this thing and then okay. reset it so that... Um, so you know that, we love you. It's something personal. Well, no, I'll, I'll, I'll reset it so that we, we can just have a general password. Sounds good. Okay. Sorry. All right. So what I'm saying is the quadratic equation will always work. It's a little bit tougher to use, but I see it as a bazooka. Think of this problem as a fly. Okay? Factoring is this nice, pretty, elegant way of using a fly swatter. That would be this. It's it's quick, it's efficient, it's good, all right? The quadratic equation is using a hand grenade to kill the fly. Which will work in the end? Both, both will work. Which is messier, the hand grenade? Which is more effective? Sometimes you can kill a fly with a fly swatter. Sometimes you can't. The quadratic equation, the hand grenade, will always work. I guarantee it. You might not like the results. It might not be a fun, pretty thing to go through, but it will work. It will kill that fly. Also blow up your house and quite possibly kill you in the process. But if your result is you wanted that fly dead, that fly will be dead, I guarantee. Guarantee bow barons, buddy. That's all I'm saying. So what I would do if I were you is I would be able to use the quadratic equation and factoring. Factoring is much quicker if it's factorable. Would you like to know the test to see whether or not it's factorable? Whether or not something can be factored? Yes, no, I don't know. I don't want to know the test. I don't want to know your secrets. Don't teach me anything new. I'm set in my ways. Okay, sure. All right. I could immediately, I could tell that this thing was factorable by looking at this thing right here. When I was doing the quadratic equation, I ended up getting the square root of 81. The square root of 81 has a nice number attached to it. It's 9. Obviously, you know that square roots don't always have the nice number attached to it. Like the square root of 80 is not a pretty number. If you have that thing inside the square root end up giving you a nice number, then you know that this thing could have been factored. If you start the quadratic equation and the stuff inside that square root can is, is a nice number, then you know that it can be factored to begin with. But if it's not a nice number, like if it's 80 or 82, then the only way to solve that would have been to use the quadratic equation. I'm not going to go over complete and square because complete and square is basically the quadratic equation. So actually, you can think, hmm, 
they would have to make sure that that's, those are some special numbers to make that a square root be a nice number because there's only a few nice numbers out there as far as square roots go. What we, the, the, I guess if you wanted an equation, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you memorize this process, but I'm just telling you that the way, best way to check to see if something is factorable is you look at what's inside the square root of the quadratic equation. So maybe not put it through the whole full-on quadratic equation, but just calculate out the square root part. You find out what the b is, you find out what the a and the c is, and you put it into the machine. If it comes out to be the square root of 81, the square root of 49, the square root of 100, those ones, then you know that, hey, I could have taken the factoring route. Does that make sense? If the number doesn't come out to be a nice square root, then you know that, hey, I need to do the quadratic equation on this bad boy. But I'm also, you know, partway done with it because I did the square root part already. We cool? Does this make sense to you? This is actually such an important technique that we give this thing a name, this thing inside the square root. Uh, b squared minus 4ac. I believe that's called the discriminant. That's what it's, it's just the name. I don't have a good reason why they named it that way. That's, that's, that's the name they gave it. So, there's the discriminant. All right, dudes.